welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh, and I'm doing the year-to-date results for the Stock Swoosh Show Live Trading Room. Again, so far this year, from January start of the year up through today, today is April 11th, hard to believe we're almost halfway through April. Our stats so far this year, 318,190 in the room results with an average risk of $3,000 per trade. These are day trades. These are not options. These are margin trades. You would need a margin account to do these trades. We're going to go over the stats. If you have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswitch.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So great news. Tomorrow is the start of earnings season. Earnings season is a great time to trade. Again, the banks start out earnings season, and it's going to be a wild one, people. <laughs> We've seen a lot of volatility in the last couple of days, and it's not going to end today. So again, earnings season is a good time to trade. Why? You get a lot of big moves. You get a lot of gaps, and I focus on gaps. For those of you that don't know what I do, I'm mostly short, and I always, always do gaps. If you've been thinking about trading the stock market and you've been wanting to do this and you've been dreaming about working for yourself, you can become independent and work for yourself if you trade the stock market. But you have to have a consistent high winning strategy in order to be successful and make money. So again, what does that mean? It means that you have to win in more trades than you lose. And it's also important, I think, to get support. The support of the live trading room, again, all these trades in here I call live in the room, the entry, the exit, the stop. Don't trade alone. If you get support, it will help you do so much better, like this little guy in the floaty. Again, having me in the room, go through the trades, rate the gaps, call the entries. It really, really helps people, especially when you're trying to figure out what to do. And then, of course, I'm there to answer questions as well. So here is FAST. FAST closed here, gap down. Again, what do I do? I look at stocks that are gapping, particularly stocks that are gapping down. So this closed here at one price at four o'clock and then opened at another price at 9.30 this morning. Open rallied, dropped. I was long, long out of this, didn't, didn't get this all the way down. But it is interesting, this continued past the point that I exited the trade. Entry was 72, shares was 2,000, risk was 3,200, exit was 70.85. Again, this ended up going down this morning's low, I think was 69. 30 or 40 or something the last time I looked at it. Profit for me was 2300 It was a nice trade. Again, I like to get in and out of trades fast, and that is what we did. Here you see it. Get the drop. Boom. So again, got in, got out, got the short. Boom. Done. And again, if you wanted to hold this, you could have held it. Oh, here it is. Here it is where it was around, looks like 10 o'clock, 10.15-ish came down in here. So stats for the year, number of trades was 92, number of winners 59, 31 losers, two break even, win ratio for the year so far, 66%. Again, earnings season starts tomorrow. I prefer to do one trade a day. I did also call KMX today, but I didn't do it. Some people did KMX and FAST, and so they actually had a better day than me because I only did one trade. I prefer to do one trade. If I'm doing two things, it's usually because the first trade got stopped. It's rare that I would go after two things at the same time. But again, today you could have, they both worked. So we started out the year, was closed in January 2nd. Then I did the SPY on the 3rd, worked, nice trade, good start to the year. Then we did Apple on the 4th, we did SPY. That was a great trade on January 5th, 4,500 profit. Sometimes I'll do a retake. We did a retake in BA. So if the first trade stops, I'd take it again. That's what we did here. And sometimes I do an ad. That's an advanced trader concept I teach more in the entry class. but. If I call it in the room and call an ad, you can do it. On the 9th, we did BA again. BA was like the gap of the year so far, to be honest with you. No trade on, trades on January 10th. The 11th, we did BA and Tesla. This was the day I did two things. JPM was a nice trade on January 12th. January 15th was closed. Tesla was a good trade that was a winner on the 16th. 17th was off. 18th, we did C CBS, which was 3,000 profit and a massive trade in D DFS. Uh, this is Discover, really, really big one on that day, over 19,000. And again, this is into the start of earnings season back in January. Then we did Baidu that lost. Tesla was a winner in the 19th. Then we did Baidu again, just couldn't get that one going there. 
That was on the 22nd. Davinia was a loser. Guild won. And Tessa was a big winner on the 22nd. MMM was a winner at 5,100 on the 23rd. We did TXN was a winner. 2,700 the 25th was Tessa was another winner. We've, been, we've done Tessa a lot this year. That's another really big one we had. INTC we did was a winner in the 26th. No trades on the 29th. So say I get up in the morning and I rate everything I can find and see. If nothing rates 20 points or more per my system, then I'm not going to trade. Again, follow the rules, follow the rating system, go with the gap rating. 30th was BA and UPS, two winners. The 31st Tesla lost. Google was a big winner on the 31st. QCOM lost. BA, another big winner on February 1st. And February 2nd was Amazon, which was a nice winner there that was to start off February. Again, with this four quarterly earning seasons a year, we're starting... Again, the next quarter, which is tomorrow, and it's going to last pretty much into the end of May. And then in between the earnings seasons, there are gaps. There are gaps for lots of reasons. There are news gaps. There are sector gaps. There are gaps that go gap with the market for economic reasons or data, like this morning and yesterday, the market gap. So there are many, many things to do throughout the whole season, but the most profitable time to trade where you get the biggest moves in stocks is earnings season, which again, like I said, for this quarter is starting tomorrow. February 5th, BA lost. Tesla was a big winner. February 6th, we had BA was a loser. Rambus was a loser. Apple lost. Tesla was break even a small winner in the queues. That was a tough day for me. You can tell the days where I have good days and the days that I have harder days because I do less trades. Babel lost. Guild was a winner. Two good trades in Snap. That was February 7th. Win was a winner. Nice trade in PayPal. 47.50 on the 8th. Off on the 9th, no trades on the 12th. Tesla was a winner and big one in BA on the 13th. Spy lost and then a big winner on the Spy on the 13th. This was February. MGM was a good one on the 14th. TWLO was a winner on the 15th. Then we had Cisco lost. Roku was a winner on the 16th. Closed for the 19th. Tesla was a winner. Then we had a small loser in PayPal. PANW was a winner on the 21st. Etsy was a winner. BA was a loser. RIVN was a winner on the 22nd. Square was a winner. Uh, and Amazon was a break even on the 26th. Then on the 27th, BA lost. Then eBay was a really, really good winner. I remember that one. 58.10 on eBay the 28th. 29th, it was Leap Day. QQQs lost. Amazon was a big winner on the 29th. No trades on March 1st, W day one, 2900. Target, we had to do twice. First trade stop, we did a retake. Target was a good one then, just took a while to go. March 6th was JWN, 2700. Then again, we just were hit and hit and hit it. March 7th, CN won. Marvell won. BA won on the 11th. The 12th BA was another winner. DLTR won. Tesla won. Apple won on the 15th, another winner. Then the 18th was Google was a winner. No trades on the 19th. Apple was a loser on the 20th. The QQQs lost on the 21st, and so did Amazon. Closed then. I took off for Easter. Tesla lost on both of these trades in the second. Tesla lost then again in the third. And INTC was a massive, massive winner in the third. No trades April 4th. Tesla lost. The second trade worked really well. It was Friday. Remember when Friday when it fell off a cliff? Amazon lost on April 8th. Then we took another Amazon that lost. A small winner in Apple. Then Apple lost on the 9th. BA lost. Big BA winner then. That was again when that timed. That was Tuesday. Then uh, I had a webinar the 10th off and fast was today. So again, it's all about determining your risk and how much risk you want to take. I call the entry and the stop. So if I say 50 by 90, okay, that could be 40 cents or it could be a dollar 40. You have to know what stock I'm doing. So again, say so say 40 cents. If it's 40 cents, if you take 2,000 shares, you'd be risking what? $800. And again, if it goes 40 cents and you're doubling your money, you're doubling your profit, you're turning it over once. So you'd be risking 800 and you'd be making 800 or you'd be risking 800 and making 1,000 if it went 80 cents. Or you could go a dollar twenty, and then you've been making three times the amount, for example, of what you risk. So I'm trying to turn it over once of whatever I get. If I'm risking twenty cents, I'm trying to get twenty cents. If we're risking a dollar, I'm trying to get a dollar. And again, most of the stocks that we do, we never ever ever do any penny stocks or really cheap stocks under a dollar. Rarely I would do anything under five dollars, but I'm not saying I never will. Most of the stocks we do are probably within the fifteen dollar range to maybe a hundred dollar range, but. 
I mean, you really have to look at what you do and say, okay, I have this much money. I'm going to do this many trades per work. I'm going to do this many trades per day. And again, you can see, I really don't do that many trades. That's one of the reasons it's efficient and active to be in the room with me and really so much of an asset because it's not hard to follow me because I don't do that many things. Like I told you today, I called the fast and you could have just done it and that's it. And again, I, I mentioned KMX and I looked at it and then I gave the numbers. It was too late, I thought, for me to do it, but some people did it on their own and they did it late and it went and it worked. And that would fall off a cliff today too. So can you trade with a beginner risk? The answer is yes. You have to take your account, like I said, and back it up and divide the number of trades you wanna take. You certainly could trade with a prop account on margin if you wanna set up the type of account Find out an investigative prop place, and again, you could risk $100 a trade, $200 a trade, whatever works for you. There are people, though, that just prefer, flat out prefer to do options, and if this sounds like you, you can do options. Now, there's some people in the room that aren't doing the trades at call and margin. If I call a short in BA, they're buying a put in the BA, and they're trading it like it's a day trade. So that is up to you. But again, the training room, the live room is a day trade room where I'm calling the trades on margin. The options, I have a newsletter for that. That's separate, that goes to your email, and yes, you could sign up for that too. So if you're thinking about trading and you wanna do it, if you're trying to think about it for a long, long time, it's gotta be something that you're committed to, something that you really wanna do, something that you can say, I can see my future that's gonna be different than my life right now, and I want things to be better, and I wanna have more money coming in, because again, we've talked about this. Things are out of your control that have to do with interest rates, the economy, and inflation. You're never gonna be able to predict or control those things. The best thing you can do is take care of yourself and your own life and your own finances and your own family. So if you're interested in learning what I do, you can take my class. It's called the Golden Gap Course. You must take this class to have eligibility to join the live training room. And then you can join after the class. If you want to sign up for the class now and pay for the April class, you will be able then to join the room if, in fact, that's something that you want to do because the class isn't until the end of the month. Then you could start trading tomorrow. Then you could start trading Monday and you could start getting the earnings right now. Next week's a huge week, actually, for earnings and the overall market. So the Golden Gap course is April 27th to 28th. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $69.99. You could be anywhere in the world and take it. Classes online, again, you can sign up and trade the U.S. stock market from anywhere in the world. If you want to do the combo, the combo is $74.99, which gets you the Golden Gap course and the Trends course, okay, together. Again, classes online, you don't want to miss this. Think about it. If you're interested in signing up, you must email me for sign-up forms. You cannot sign up through the website. You must email me for the forms. And again, I will allow people to join, sign up, pay for the class now and start trading as soon as they join and get in the room. Any questions, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Looking forward to a continued good month and good year for 2024.